Hello, and welcome to Least Queries Accountants Angle, a podcast where our experts answer your most burning questions regarding accounting topics and upcoming pronouncement changes. I am your host, Jason Parker. I'm a senior alliance manager here at Least Query, and today I am grateful to be joined by Elena Dillon, who is a manager of risk and accounting advisory services at Cherry Beckert. And we're going to be discussing a lot about ASC 842, the background on how the standard came to be and what Elena provides to her clients as far as assistance. And Elena's background is pretty extensive. She's worked as an internal audit lead with Johnson & Johnson. She's also worked as a controller in the corporate accounting for a tech organization. And she also does have big four audit experience. So quite the individual to have on the podcast. So Elena, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jason. And I'm happy to be here. Excellent. Excellent. So one of the things that I figure we can start with is, you know, we get asked a lot, at least Corey, and I'm sure you do at Cherry Becker too, you know, what is the purpose of trying to comply with such a complex standard like ASC 842? And there obviously is a very real and thorough reason that the accounting standards boards put this into effect. So I figure why not start? I know you have a lot of thoughts as far as the value of 842. So you want to just give everyone a background on why does this standard actually exist? Uh, this is a really great question. So the standard came about in the wake of airline industries um, not disclosing their true liabilities according to their lease contracts. So these liabilities were labeled something else. And ultimately, the um, accounting bodies came together and they said, well, we need to do something about it. And they've come up with this lease and standard ASC 842, the main purpose of which is to make sure that the companies disclose their lease liabilities and their um, cash um, projections into the future for the next five years. Excellent point you bring up. And it's funny because that is exactly what I typically tell people when we think about 842 is the airlines are the ones that have those material leases that were off balance sheet for so long. So transparency is obviously key here. And with what you do day to day, helping clients adopt 842, obviously you are not necessarily the auditor today, but you do help your clients prepare for their audit audits. So what are some questions that you feel like you get commonly asked from clients around the audit process, especially given this new accounting standard that they've never been audited under? Oh, so the questions are a multitude. And the main question is, what are these auditors looking for? And what is it that we need to disclose in our financial statement footnotes? Um, so um, we, and, and Lease Query in particular, actually has a wonderful tool. Um, they have various reports that you can run to make sure that your disclosures are complete and accurate. And um, some of the things that the auditors would be looking for, it's the uh, present value of future cash flows. It's the capitalization threshold and the discount rates. Um, it's the lease classification criteria and expedient elections and the overall process around accounting for the leases. So it would be really good for an organization to have documentation of policies. And uh, a lot of times auditors are also asking for that document to get a sense of um, completeness and accuracy of uh, lease accounting. Yep, the, the policy documentation is definitely key and at least, Corey, we do hope that the technology we offer puts them in the right direction. What I would ask next from you, Elena, is just as far as your clients getting started with documenting those policies, you mentioned quite a number of them. Is there any advice you would give them 
maybe right as they're getting started with it, like what are the primary areas for them to focus on? So um, the primary area would be documenting their practical experience uh, at the time of their adoption. So uh, practical experience are um, many, and they also have to do with lease class classification, for example, if the companies are carrying um, their historical classification and they will re reassess going forward. Um, they have to do with discount rates, for example, if the company decides to use their internal borrowing rate uh, or if the company wants to use a risk-free rate um, that is usually tied to the treasury obligations. Yeah, that's a big one for private companies because identifying those borrowing rates, especially if you're trying to utilize the IBR, can take quite a bit of time. Would you say that there are any other key accounting policies maybe that you recommend to your clients? I know that you went just simply went through a lot of the key ones, but are there any others that you think are worth calling out that you suggest your clients consider? Um, the clients, especially those organizations um, that are larger and they have a complex structure, they do. They would need to give a thought to the segregation of duties. In other words, how is that potential lease contract uh, moving up the chain of the approval, and then how it gets entered into lease query? Who puts in the data, and who approves it? Uh, the companies also need to think about completeness of those leases, and it can be achieved in um, different ways. But uh, we like testing the cash disbursement ledger. So I would say it's a good idea to pivot their disbur cash disbursement ledger by vendor to see if there are any recurring payments that are happening um, to other vendors and maybe test those for an embedded lease because perhaps some of the agreements that weren't labeled as, as a lease, they may become a lease as a result of that testing. I, I love that answer because I do think one of the largest challenges that we've seen with our client base is the completeness of the lease population. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that there are a lot of assets that qualify as a lease these days, but the contract may not say lease at the top. So checking for those recurring payments, I think is a great strategy. Um, well, Elena, we've had a short time today, but we thank you so much for joining our podcast. Um, this has been an excellent episode, just talking through some of the strategies that clients can take on as they adopt 842 and prepare for their upcoming audit. So we appreciate you joining us today. For those of you listening, keep in mind, if you subscribe to the podcast, you will get all of the new episodes straight to your inbox when we release them. We have quite a number of guests that we like to interview, and we have quite a number of topics ranging all throughout lease accounting as well. So we appreciate you joining us today, and we look forward to seeing everyone at our next episode. Thank you, Jason. I'm looking forward to seeing you as well.